I'm Katrina and this is Sew and Tear and today I want to talk to you about quail feeders. So quail are notoriously messy messy birds um, for as far as feed goes. People generally start off with one of these chick feeders is made for um, chickens and that's fine. Um, there have been reports of uh, birds on day one and day two and stuff like that when they're very very small going into this hole and actually climbing up in the feed and suffocating and dying so we don't want that um, I taped over half the holes <laughs> this is macaroni uh, duct tape but I, I did that so that they couldn't get in there and then what I end up doing is I end up cutting off the top um, to feed and I did tape them shut so you don't want them to get stuck in the top either but that's kind of what I've done for in the brooder and then when they first come out into the aviary I'm using this right now which is why it's so dirty um, in our second aviary for our birds because I kind of was playing with plans for different uh, feeder types so <clears throat> that is what you'll typically find in like a brooder situation. Um, this design is actually the first design that I um, that I used when I bought my adult uh, Caternix. And it is literally just a Tupperware with holes in it. And what that does is you fill the feed up to about there and then they're able to put their heads in and put their heads in and eat. And what that does is it reduces the amount that they kick out of the of the container. So this is a reduced waste uh, container, and I've seen this on uh, Living Traditions Homestead and Slightly Rednecks, uh, the, both of their YouTube's channels. That's where I got this idea from, so it's not an original idea. Um, and this is what I used for my original adults for a very long time. Um, after this, when I put them in the aviary, I'll put up some pictures here of what I had. I had a PVC uh, tube that had a T. I got that idea from some chicken people. Um, chicken people. Anyway, I got that idea from from some videos about chicken food, and I used something similar to as that my chickens, but not not that design. What I found with that is that it didn't. Uh, flow. The food didn't flow from from the upper part into the tea very well. So I redesigned it and I came up with this design. Put a picture here. And this is what I currently use for my chickens. Uh, the chickens have a little bigger hole. Uh, but this worked for months and it was great. I, I strapped it to the to the wall of the garage and it worked wonderfully until one day they all decided that they could figure out how to kick the feed out of it. And then I had feed everywhere and they were dust bathing in this big pile of feed and I'm like, okay, I'm not refilling that until you eat all of it. <laughs> so uh, it worked really, really well until it didn't. So that might be a good option for you if you, um, if your birds aren't aren't as uh, gung-ho on dust bathing in their feed. Uh, next thing that I did is I went back to, you know, I knew that this worked well, and so I went back to it except for this is way too small for the number of birds I have. So I sized it up. I went with this, and I heard from somebody um, that the clear top they don't stand on. You can see how dirty, oops, you can see how dirty the top is of this. And this, while it's dusty, it doesn't have poop on it. So I don't know if it's true or not, but it's been true so far with my birds. So again, this is the same design. There's a distance from the bottom that their head can go in and get the food. And they do kind of get some of the food out, but it's a lot less than, you know, the dust bathing that they were doing. So the issue with this, this is a several day feeder for me. Uh, for some people, it wouldn't be that long. For some people, it'd be a really long time. Um, the one thing is this, is that they can't reach the middle. So you see how wide that is? They can't reach the middle. And they can reach about that far in. And I don't have holes on one side because I was going to put this up against the, um, the wall. So they may have been able to reach almost to the center if I put holes in this side. But I have holes on three sides. 
and they can't reach the center. So that's one. Two, I was looking for a tube to put up that's clear because I thought it would be nice to know how much food is in there. Um, turns out they either don't exist or they're really expensive. So there's nothing, there's no cheap solution that I found for that. So I kind of gave up on that and have been just living with this feeder, uh, filling it every, you know, two and a half days is about what it is. So, or two or three days. So I fill it when it's getting low and it works. But I want a system that if I go away, I can just have someone collect eggs and that's it. You know, I have automatic water set up. I have automatic feeder set up. Um, these automatic feeder, not automatic. I have automatic water set up and I have, I want to have a long-term food uh, set up for my, for my quail. Um, that way, if someone needs to, if someone's watching the quail, all they have to do is collect eggs. And if they don't collect eggs, they don't, you know, they forget one day, two days, whatever, no harm done. Um, birds are still alive. They have still have water, they still have food. So that is my goal, um, is, is to provide a long-term feeder. So we went to Walmart actually to look for, I was thinking like a, like a tall trash can, like a kitchen trash can or something. Um, and we're looking and looking and we found some stuff and kind of made out of really, really cheap plastic, which I mean, it is what it is when you find stuff like that. But what happened is we started looking for the trash cans, like outdoor trash cans, and came upon a couple different solutions. And then of course it's after Christmas and um, this was right after Christmas. So uh, we start, I saw something way down the aisle. I'm like, I'm gonna go look at that. And it was one of those wrapping paper storage containers it's about that big and it's really tall though and so i'm like wow that'd be awesome because it doesn't have a big footprint and it you know it's skinny enough they can get into it it has you know a good lid you can open it and close it but then we kind of look at it and it the stability of it wouldn't be very good just because it's too tall and skinny and then the lid um the, the lid was clear the body of it was red and the lid of it would have had to have been um, on the bottom, how I, how I was thinking at the time, and it just wouldn't work. So um, it is it would be an option for someone, but uh, I went with a different route. So down the aisle from that, <laughs> we were carrying around garbage cans every all over the place. We had to put so many so many garbage cans back. Um, that I found this garbage can. It's skinny which I like because they can get, um, if we put holes in the side, they can get all the way to the middle. So I don't have to mitigate that. I don't have to put, you know, a cone at the bottom or anything to make the feed go. And so I'll show you what this is. It's that. Um, so this is a 23 gallon trash can, which um, takes up less floor space than other, the, the other trash can that we had that was uh, actually less, less gallons. So taking up less floor space in an aviary that is already, you know, fairly small, then I think that's a great idea. Um, the idea is to put this um, one short end on by the, the garage, which is the wall, and then it would stick out. They would have three sides to eat from. And again, we would cut off, we would cut this, this handle off so that it would be up against the wall. Um, so. When you have something tall like that, you know, I've already gone over with these ones, you only fill it to right below the hole. Um, that's not gonna work with a trash can because <laughs> you're gonna have lots of food. So what the answer to that is, is to get, is to get some of these PVC angles. Now, I know that my bird's heads fit in this hole and this hole, is about the same size as this. This is slightly smaller, but they're gonna have no problem putting their head in there. And so um, what this will look like, I'll show you on here. <clears throat> so part of this will be outside, part of it will be inside. Um, I might have to use some silicone or something, but basically what it would look like is this. So, you have the bottom is right here, 
you know it's maybe an inch off the ground or off the floor of the the feeder and they can then stick their head inside the hole and down and get the food so that is my plan that's what i'm going to be showing you guys today except for it won't be clear it'll be in this this black trash can for that we need a a hole saw and they sell these these are uh you know i got this from harbor freight for like i don't know less than ten dollars whenever you're dealing with a hole saw you're going to want a screwdriver or something that fits in the hole of the hole saw so if you see here's the hole saw this is a one and a half inch and it has a hole in the side you're gonna want something to put in there and pop out the little pieces that you saw that, that you saw out. So what I'm gonna do is if I want one inch, <clears throat> if I want one inch of space below this as a feeder, so they can go in and get the food. Um, and that, that what that allows is allows the food to go in from the sides. Um, so that they'll be able to reach it. If you put it all the way down, obviously there's gonna not gonna be any food food down there for them. So put it an inch up and with that it should be enough space for them to go down and get the food. And so what my plan is, is to measure from here to here plus an inch and line that up with the top of the saw. This length is one and a half, no two and a half inches. So I need three and a half inches is where the Three and a half inches is where the top of this is going to go. Unfortunately, we have a black thing instead of a clear thing. So, I have a purple marker. <laughs> we'll see how well it shows up. So I'm measuring three and a half inches from the bottom. And here we go. So again, I'm lining up the top with that three and three fourths mark. Apparently when you push too hard, it doesn't work. All right, so the, the hole is in there somewhere. <laughs> That's just kind of a silly thing to say. The the leavings of this is inside. But what happens with these is they do get loose. Oops, they do get loose pretty much every time you you uh, make a hole. So you have to retighten. That's just something I've noticed. I don't know if this is just the Harbor Freight brand and maybe there's better brands out there that you don't have to retighten, but anyway, that is how it is for this. So I'm just gonna do a test on this. And it is too big which is okay. Um, it's quite a bit big, but it'll work. The elbows that we used were one inch elbows, one inch PVC elbows, and we had several renditions after doing this one. So it might, I'm gonna skip several days later because we tried some different things. I'll have another video to show the no waste feeder we ended up do using. I will show you one of the solutions that we tried that would work that is not a no waste, but if you did not have access to these elbows, this would be a potential option for you. And that involves creating an insert into this. However, um, I would do a smaller hole if that's what you're going to do without an insert. Only a few of them, like maybe four or five, figured out how to use this thing. And so in order to better feed the not so bright birds, we made an adjustment. This is gonna be on the bottom and uh, the feed will go through in the middle and hopefully that will work. We'll see. So setting it down there, is it above the, the holes? Barely above. Barely above the holes? Let's look at it. Yeah. On the side. Just a millimeter higher. All right. I'm thinking it might have to go lower, but let's put some food there and just find out. All right, so we still have to cover up this hole down here 
Um, so I did pour in more food over here to see how the holding it would work. And this is what it looks like when you're at the hole level. So they can easily get to it. So this method did work and would work probably better if those holes were smaller and further apart. You can see that she is working pretty hard and getting <laughs> a lot of the food out the little windows, but it does work if you're in a pinch and don't have the parts for the angles. So this is our first attempt and it was it had a few too many holes. So, excuse me, Birdie. So we're gonna fix this. We just fixed the one in the main quail aviary. If you look inside, you can see the problem. The edges are open a little bit. So you measure this out. Can you show people what you did? So the problem is, can you point at the problem? Problem is that the gaps are too big on the side. Can you point? Right here. Okay. That gap is too big from there to the garbage can is too big. So what he's doing is he's uh, we'll we'll keep this we'll keep this uh, structure, but we're adding a cardboard piece that goes on top. We just did this for the other aviary, and it worked for the other aviary, so we are assuming, we're assuming it's gonna work for this one. All right, so what he's going to do is he's going to bend it to fit this, and it will also go up on the sides of the garbage can, and then we're also cut a slit to match this slit here. That looks like, is that wet? No. Are you sure? Okay. So these guys have spread a whole bunch of food all over the place. I tried to get some, some of it back in the bag, but not everything got back. So cutting the slit to go in the middle. Can help getting it down there? Huh? Are you using your tacker? Yeah. So he's using his electric tacker to tack the cardboard to the wood. You can use a staple gun or probably just the weight of the food would be okay. His carpet tools come in handy on the homesteading stuff. <laughs> I think so. Out of staples? I think I'm pressing too hard. So the idea behind this is to seal that gap on the side. So he's cutting now some braces just with cardboard making some braces so that it pushes that cardboard against the edges of the um, of the garbage can okay 
Okay, so that just makes a brace. It does it shouldn't impede any of the movement of the it shouldn't impede any of the movement of the feed. And they're tight. Yeah. Alright, let's see how it works. <laughs> Nothing so far. Yay! It works. I think you gotta look down. It's coming thing. out a little bit on this side, but I think it's fine. I think it's just a directional thing. But yeah, looks good. Are you looking close under to see if it's, it's not flowing enough? Yeah, there's so there's food in there. They can get to it. Okay. Yeah, before before when it came out, it came out like all the way up to the top of the here and then all the way down. It was like a big pile. Yep. All right, we're going to fill this up and it should last them quite a while. These guys have had this for a little bit now and it appears to be working. This was part one to show you what you can do and what we have done and the long path that we have taken to get to a feeder that works for us. So, and all of these feeders worked in some capacity, some more than others, and for different types of uh, situations and living environments. And so I am hoping that what the goal of this video is, is to show you some different ideas and some different solution problem and problem solving um, techniques. And so I'm hoping that this video uh, gives you some ideas and makes you able to kind of think about things a little differently with regards to feeding your quail. And then part two, which I think I'm just going to name like the ultimate quail feeder or something like that. Um, that will come out on Tuesday and that is a no waste feeder. We haven't had any waste from it. So all of this um, work that you saw in this video worked its way up to the invention of this other um, no waste feeder that we currently use. I thank you for watching and hope that you found this inspiring and enjoy the day. We'll see you next time.